Welcome to Grace Goes Deeper, a short video series for people who are exploring topics on Christianity, faith, and the Bible. Today we'll be looking at a grouping of extra-biblical texts known as the Apocrypha. Some have challenged the Bible for being too limited. What if something is missing? And what tends to dominate this conversation is pointing to apocryphal books and asking, why are those not included? What about all these other texts? In our last video, we discussed heresies. From the beginning of Christianity, heresy has challenged the church. The biblical authors, Paul, John, and Peter, write their letters in response to early heresies, specifically Gnosticism. In general, all the New Testament apocryphal books are rooted in Gnosticism and are seeking to promote it. The biblical canon is doing exactly the opposite. With this in mind, I would argue that people today aren't becoming less religious, but more. People are simply becoming less definitive in what they believe. It is not that people believe in nothing, it is that people are seeking to believe in anything or everything. This is why Eastern religions are making a comeback. This is where Gnosticism finds its roots and has become enticing today. Gnosticism comes from the Greek term gnosko, which means knowledge. The Apocrypha offers a Gnostic gospel, which is a hidden truth a higher calling to our own spirituality and how we individually relate to the universe. But this goes against everything Jesus and his apostles taught. If Jesus was who he said he was, and the words of his teaching are true, the apocryphal books cannot be true. The church has held that 27 books of the New Testament are canon, and excluded the 12 plus apocryphal books. Though the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Church include Old Testament apocryphal books, Christians have agreed that the 27 New Testament books complete the canon, a term used for what is considered historical and authoritative. Think about canon this way. You have the Star Wars canon and the Harry Potter canon. They are complete stories and they can only be added to by the original authors. They have a complete canon. Outside of their canon, some people write out of their own imagination and creativity, but they cannot change or manipulate the official canon. The stories are set in stone. The canon of the Bible is similar. The apostles who were witness to Jesus and his teachings are the ones who had the authority and inspiration uh, to write down the accounts of Jesus' life and ministry. Nothing outside of that is canonical. Apoc apocryphal authors were not eyewitnesses, they were anonymous, and they wrote after the events took place. With this in mind, canon was already established by the church by the early 2nd century. This is proven in how the early church fathers treated the texts. We also have the Muratorian Canon, dated to 180 AD, that lists 22 of the 27 books that would become the New Testament Canon. This means that within 150 years of Christ's resurrection, Christians had agreed upon a set of authoritative documents. An accusation is that the Canon wasn't solidified until 400 years after Jesus, but that just isn't the case. Though there was some debate, there was a clear set of books that all early Christians agreed upon to have apostolic authority and canonicity, none of which included the Apocrypha. A helpful way to think about them is fan fiction, with fantastical elements in legend language that were written after the fact by unknown authors. If you think back to our first couple videos, the canonical Bible was not written as legend, but actual history. This is another proof that apocryphal books are of a different category and were not written to carry down truth, but instead concepts and ideas that are actually quite contrary to the message of the gospel. This message would be Gnosticism. Gnosticism held to several different principles heavily influenced by Greek philosophy. The presence of Gnostics in the first century was clear, but unlike the apostolic Christians, they had no identifiable text. Their message was a secret and for the elite, whereas apostolic Christians had a clear text that came from actual eyewitnesses known as the apostles. So a century later, the Gnostics wrote texts of their own to support their ideology and use famous apostolic names as titles to add prominence and authority to their work, even though those people had died a century before the texts were written. Names like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Judas, the Gospel of Mary, the secret acts of Peter, but read side by side to the apostolic writings, you would see a clear distinction between their message. For example, the Gnostics believed in dualism, that the physical world is evil and the spiritual world is good, whereas God said he created things to be good. They believed in a secret mystery for the elite, but Paul said that this mystery had been revealed and offered to all. They did not believe that Jesus was God in the flesh because flesh was evil for them. Yet Paul taught in 1 Timothy that in Jesus, God made manifest uh, in the flesh. 
Gnostics taught that the body was a trap, held uh, captive, held the spirit captive. The Bible calls our body a temple, a place for God's spirit to dwell in something that will be resurrected and made perfect. Though there are so many contradictions, Gnosticism was a deeply held and promoted ideology at the time of the apostles. Paul spoke directly against these teachings to Timothy, charging him to guard and keep the truth handed to him by the apostles, that he should be careful to reject subtleties that falsely masquerade as knowledge. The same charge given to Timothy from the Apostle Paul is the same charge to the church today. Though Gnosticism as an organized religion is not around, the philosophy, the writings, and the ideology remain. Gnosticism is the same lie from the Garden of Eden, enticing mankind that we can have the secret knowledge of the gods and we can determine truth for ourselves. It is the lie of Eastern religion that we can find salvation through escapism. It holds to the dualism of the Greek philosophy and teaches that the body and the flesh are not important, and today it meets the postmodern era with a mysticism that is for the individual and self-determinist. The Apocrypha, though not scripture, seems enticing to every generation, but it is not the gospel, and it misses the entire point of the Bible, which leads us to another video. If there are false gospels masquerading as truth and knowledge, what was the point of the actual gospels? What is the gospel the Bible teaches? next time on Grace Goes Deeper.